Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and I am back with another video. Uh, this one is actually going to be covering decks for Operation Husky, this mini tournament that is going to be running for the next three or so days. Uh, it is a popper format, and for those that don't know what popper is, it's a one that you can only play with standard or limited cards in. Uh, and you are able to play it for free. Uh, and you just play two games, you play one game, and then you play a second game, and if you do that, you win. Uh, there aren't any rewards. And really, the only rewards are, there are two achievements. Uh, one achievement is the, is actually Operation Husky, where you have to play five games as Britain, Germany, or the US, and then f win five games as Italy or France as allies. So I want to provide people with some decks that they can try out. Uh, and just to let everybody know, uh, we actually have, there's actually a Popper Cards Discord uh, that helped, that really created all of these decks uh, that people were playing around with and sharing. So I'm going to leave the link at the top of the description. Uh, I'd highly suggest joining it if you're interested in the popper format as there's good discussion that goes on there. And well, that's where you're going to find the best and most modern list that people make up. Uh, but regardless, we have a total of three decks today. So I'm not going to go as in depth as I normally do because we got to move a bit quickly or else this is going to be, you know, an hour and a half long. And that's just a little bit too long. So in order to keep it a little short, let's jump right into it. First deck is a British France mobilized deck. Uh, this is built in a way. This is actually built very similar to the um, to the mobilized decks that we see on ladder. Uh, really, though, it is built a little differently because we're unable to run Commonwealth, which is normally like the finishing card in this deck. Uh, so very quickly to go over everything, uh, we have evasive action. Uh, well, okay, let's start with probably the most important thing, the Potes. This is the card that really enables almost everything within the deck, uh, and is one of the biggest reasons to play Mobilize. It is a very strong card, and if it sticks around, it's just going to draw so many cards, uh, especially with so many cheap Mobilize units. Uh, and this just gives, this is like the sole reason and the most important unit in the deck. Uh, you want to be able to either play this out and then immediately play mobilize units with it, or you want to play it out and try to protect it with our countermeasures, which leads us to evasive action. Uh, being able to shut down uh, a deployment effect can be very useful. Uh, it can be a very strong way to blank like uh, some effect from, say, you know, like a retreat effect that would bounce our Potes or something like that. You know, like from a Panzer IV F2 or like even just blocking like a Flame Panzer's effect or something else. Uh, you know, we run a couple copies of those. Uh, and then the other countermeasure we have is Interception. Uh, being able to block targeted removal is very nice. And this also has the nice interaction that occasionally it's going to block like Burn. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Burn in the tournament so far. Uh, it just doesn't seem... But just being able to block like some sort of removal can be really nice. You know, it gives you just that nice defensive edge and able to mess with the enemy's plans. Uh, beyond that, we have the 5th Parachute Brigade. Uh, it's a zero-cost mobilize. It pairs extremely well with uh, the Potes, in particular being a free card draw and some healing. And it also works uh, well because sometimes you just draw like four of them on turn one and you play four of them out and then you sometime, and then you can occasionally just snowball out of control. Uh, next up is the first airborne. This is a one credit mobilized unit. Uh, this is one of the scariest mobilized units if the enemy doesn't deal with it uh, because it can become like a 4-4 four, four fury with zero operation cost. Uh, but normally it doesn't stick around that long, or you're forced to use it, or the enemy is able to knock the mobilize off of it. But it can snowball very hard if the enemy can't deal with it. It gives you a good bit, but it's mainly there because it's just one credit to play a mobilize unit. Next up, we have the 73rd Regiment. Uh, this is another one of the really big mobilize units. Uh, it's one credit again. Uh, you'll notice that almost all of our mobilize units are just one to two credits right now. 
uh, and that's because we really need them to be cheap to work with the Potes. Um, but beyond that, uh, it gets plus one, plus one whenever your HQ gains defense. This works extremely well in a Britain-French combo, as you both have the Honey, which we'll talk about in a second, and also the Potes that will both be healing you as you draw cards, making it very easy for this thing to often be gaining plus two, plus two a turn. Uh, if you play down a Potez, you want to play down the 73rd as the first unit, so it maximizes the amount of stats you get off of it. It's not uncommon, I see, for this to often be a 3-4 or a 4-5, you know, the turn you play it down, if you're able to gain a little bit of life with, like, a Potez or something. It's a very solid card, and definitely one of the biggest threats for the enemy. Uh, beyond that, we have the number one Commando. This is a bit of a filler slot, to be honest. Uh, it's not particularly the strongest option. It doesn't synergize with a lot of our deck. The most notable thing is that it is a very solid option against a handful of decks. Uh, namely, we have seen some decks that are very much about snowballing with a single unit. So the number one commando helps fill the niche of hard removal uh, because you're able to just instantly kill them with the commando. But outside of that, this is mostly just here for a two drop that is all around decent but it's not particularly synergistic within the deck we just don't have much that would really do better than it uh, then you have the m3 a3 honey uh, this is a really strong card uh, obviously it's a well statted unit uh, and it's kind of just like one of those those uh, standard British cards that you just pretty much put into any British deck uh, it's decently statted you're gaining some extra health with it it works extremely well with the 73rd. Also works incredibly well with the Potez. If you have a Honey and a Potez down, you're getting 3 health per mobilized unit you play. And that can add up to insane amounts very quickly. Uh, beyond that, you have the 48th Regiment. Uh, this is our most expensive mobilized unit. And is mostly here just so we can fit a couple extra mobilized. Uh, it's not particularly strong, but it is arguably one of the our biggest mobilized so it can occasionally be useful but again it's mostly here so we have a couple extra mobilized units alongside uh alongside i guess maybe having a little bit of extra guard in it uh then we have three convoys uh this is just to help make sure we don't run out of draw uh, you really want to make sure to have draw that is beyond the Potez because there are games that the Potez does flop. Whether you don't find the Potez or you're not able to get enough mobilized units together in a hand to have some big turn, it's important to have draw that is not like unconditional draw. And that's where Convoy comes in. And it does a very good job at it. You have two East Array regiments. This is just to give you a bit of defense against certain aggro decks that are looking to really put the pressure on you. Uh, mobilize can sometimes find itself on the back foot, so being able to just play down a relatively large guard makes it difficult for the enemy to uh, try to overwhelm you. And this is hopefully where Issa Ray Regiment. Uh, then we have two airdrops. This is a card we don't see a lot uh, in the standard mobilize decks, but it's an option for uh, to get some extra mobilize. Uh, the Potez 63.11 works does notably work with it if you can activate it so there is the ability to draw two cards and gain four health with a potez if you could pull off an airdrop uh, but airdrop is a little bit better in this format because there is less um like the, it definitely seems like there's a bigger battle for the front line so being able to drop two parachutes into the front line is very effective uh it should overall be probably one of the weaker cards in the deck, I'd have to say, but just, again, having the ability to get extra mobilized to sometimes combo up with the Potez is worth it, uh, but definitely want to keep the copies down. Then you have Defend in Depth. Uh, Defend in Depth is a really, really strong removal order and is going to be our primary option for killing stuff. Uh, it is not hard for this to be 3 credit, deal 5, 6 damage, which kills practically everything within the popper format. Uh, and that gives Defend in Depth, like, and it's also able to hit anything. It's a very, very strong card and is very capable. Uh, and it serves as the primary removal for us. 
Uh, you also have the M3 grant. Uh, due to the lack of Commonwealth, we actually need a tool that is able to reward us for having a lot of health. And this is where the grant comes in. Uh, a 4-7 tank is, for 4 credits, quite a big unit. And it has guard. It's a very tough unit and can definitely really put the na hammer down on people uh, and really give them a run for their money. Uh, it's mainly the big late game card of our deck. Uh, if our swarm of mobilized units hasn't won, then hopefully the addition of some big 4-7 tanks will be able to close out the game. Uh, and then obviously the Potez, it's the core card. If you're not playing Potez in Mobilize, you're playing Mobilize wrong. Uh, and that is the deck. So in terms of a mulligan, uh, a super quick mulligan, you're mainly looking for a one-drop Mobilize unit. Uh, it's actually very useful because... With everybody playing uh, U.S., Germany, or Britain, there is actually a lot less bloody sickles going around. Uh, and without sickle, a one a turn one mobilized unit is actually a lot more common to stick around, which gives this stuff gives gives these units a lot of flexibility in their options, uh, and hopefully gives you the ability to start snowballing but mainly you want a one drop mobilized unit you want one of your two drops i normally go for honey or commando but the 48th is also totally fine and then after that you're looking for more of the same uh, and you're looking to play convoys and regiments and uh you're mainly looking to in the mid game find the potes uh, don't keep the Potez in your mulligan unless you have a really good curve already. Like you have a 1-drop into a 2-drop into a 3-drop. That way you can kind of, you know, save the Potez for later. Uh, but if you keep the Potez with an iffy hand, it can really come to bite you. Uh, where you just don't have anything in hand. Uh, but with that said, that's that deck. Uh, let's jump to deck number 2, which is a really interesting deck. Uh, a... German France control deck that it well it's not exactly a control deck it's a very interesting it is a deck built around resistance yet it is also a somewhat aggressive mid-range deck uh, and it's a really interesting thing uh, I actually have not played more than a game or two with this deck, so it is definitely very strange, but to what I saw, it was built in a way that is meant to shut down a lot of the commonly seen decks right now. Uh, for example, if you're going up against other mobilizes, uh, Eagle Claws and stuff like the Nebelwerfer and the Flame Panzer and Sudden Strike, you know, just gets to blow up all of their important cards. Uh, you have also a lot of anti-aggro tools uh, in order to really shove it to aggro. And then you also have some very strong uh, late game removal. Uh, to very quickly go over the deck, uh, Careless Talk uh, is an anti-aggro card. Uh, we'll get to, I think, the main reason that this card sees play, but it's very good at just throwing off turn one plays and buying you time to do other things. Uh, you also have Viva La Resistance. Uh, this is a cheap card draw, and the Resistance card is actually useful for two main reasons. Uh, option Reason number one is that it helps to make Defend and Death more effective, and it's also just one credit draw a card, so you're able to very easily get deeper into your deck and find your important cards a little more consistently for a low cost. Uh, you have the second, the Expeditionary Core. Uh, this is just like a turn two play that gives the enemy more resistance for that. It's also important to note that the resistance... I see a lot of people often taking the damage in resistance. Uh, they'll often deal two to three damage to themselves. And that can sometimes just allow you to actually set up a kill uh, that if they had just removed the cards, they wouldn't have. People really don't like to mill their deck and will take the damage more than they probably should, although don't count on that entirely, but it's sometimes a nice upside. Uh, Sudden Strike is an anti-aggro card. Similar to Careless Talk, I'm going to explain in a minute why I think that this is in the deck mainly, but again, it's just really good at killing anything two credits or less. 
Ka. Fifth Panzer Grenadier. Uh, I've talked about this card a couple times before, but this is a really strong option to help you enable hard-hitting kills. Being able to give a big unit fury is really good at killing people, uh, especially if they don't see it coming. Uh, and this is just really strong. Uh, you know, anything that's like a 5-5 five, five or bigger is really scary with the 5th Panzer Grenadier. And they're going to hit like a dump truck and just murder the enemy when you deal 10 plus damage in a single turn when they thought they would only take 5. Uh, that's the main purpose. Uh, Panzer 38T is just like a very good standard card. Uh, it's a decent body and it draws you a card. Not much to say. You have the Nebelwerfer 42. Uh, the Nebel, it is a relatively useful artillery piece. Uh, the deployment to deal one damage can be very useful to help finish enemies off. It can help disrupt mobilize. It can snipe away annoying units in smoke screen. And it's an artillery piece. So if the enemy doesn't remove it, it can oftentimes get favorable trades. Uh, you have Eagle Claws, which is meant to really help shut down mobilize as you're able to just obliterate all of their, like, 1-1s and 2-2s in the back line while also stripping mobilize if any of them survive. Uh, also can occasionally help against those decks that are playing a handful of otherwise back line units. The 980 Volk Grenadier. Uh, this is just a really big 3-drop infantry. Uh... In Popper, this is, I would say, like just kind of a gold standard. Uh, with removal being a little more limited and there being a little, and the format, I would say, being a little slower, Volk's Grenadier really shines and is just very tough overall. Uh, definitely, almost always is getting favorable trades outside of a handful of removal options. Defend in Depth, I talked about this a minute ago. It's really good uh, at killing anything. Uh, and just is really flexible. Uh, works well if you pair it up with the resistance card so the enemy has a bigger hand when you play this. Flame Panzer is able to blow up any one drop unit. Uh, again, really good against mobilize, but also very similar for its purpose with sudden strike and whatnot. Uh, and again, we're going to talk about it in a minute. I got to get through this deck to the, our last deck, and we'll see why this deck is so loaded up with, like, destroy target enemies that cost one or less. Then you have the BF109 E7 trope. Trop? Probably trop. <laughs> I always mess that up. Uh, but this is one of our big game-ending threats. Uh, we have a good mix of infantry and tanks, so it's not unreasonable for the 109 to be a 6-6, and that is very big. Uh, I find it is the most common combination with the 5th Panzer Grenadier for a kill, since it doesn't need to move into the front line, and it's also our biggest unit. Uh, you have Call to the Colonies, which may seem a bit weird, but is here to give this slightly slower deck a bit of breathing room being able to just gain a defense even if you're paying a little bit more for a fortification uh, being able to gain that have a fortification in your german deck gives you healing that you otherwise don't have which gives you some breathing room and the ability to stabilize after the enemy uh, re if the enemies really put you on the back foot and worst case you just play it as a slightly more expensive convoy to draw two cards which should overall make it a it's a real it's a well-rounded card and gives us just a good amount of flexibility uh the hummel the hummel is an effective retreat card once you've gotten past the early game uh and if you're applying pressure our late game is made up of a lot of retreat effects in order to really keep the enemy on the back foot as they can't play cards and can't develop their own things to stop us uh in that vein the hummel does that quite well while also being a really tough artillery Four health ain't the easiest to remove, and it's two attacks, so it's going to be chipping in there quite effectively. Uh, then you also have the Panzer IV F2, which is just like, has always been like one of those gold star budget cards, uh, and, and that has sometimes seen play in competitive, but in a pauper style format, this is just like an amazing card. Uh, you, you don't see as many deployment effects, and you often see a lot more slow units and guards and that's where the panzer IV shines 
as he is able to really just bounce any annoying guards or whatnot while putting a big body on the board. Uh, then you also have the Fock Wolf 198, uh, which is just a big fighter that draws a card. Uh, it just gives the deck a little bit more oomph, you know, one extra late game threat that also replaces itself with a card draw. It just gives us a little bit extra staying power. So, in the mulligan, uh, you're definitely looking to take a more passive early game, and you're going to want stuff like Careless Talk, Viva La Resistance in the early game, Sudden Strikes, Neville Werfers, uh, Defend in Depths. You're wanting your er removal early on, and then if the enemy is playing slow, then you want to develop your threats like the 980 Volks, the Panzer 38, the BF 109E, you know, and develop those out and slowly start to build pressure. And if you can ever get ahead on board, then the mixture of Hummels and Panzer IVs are very good at keeping you ahead by keeping the enemy back on their board. Uh, and then in the late game, you are essentially looking to stick a big unit, play 5th Panzer Grenadier, and fury the person to death. With that deck, we have our final list for today. Uh, the Popper Pizza deck. Uh, the pizza, so pizza decks are essentially referring to the L640 style decks, uh, as this is a U.S. Italian deck. Uh, I have definitely seen this several times, and it is something that you really have to consider when you're building your deck, because this deck is all about playing the L6040 out, abusing that one credit zero operation cost on a tough body, and instead, uh, just simply buffing it constantly and making it nigh impossible to kill and using that to win the game so with that said super quick overview uh, the US ACE uh, it is a free buff uh, it pairs extremely well with the L640 or other cheap units to just make them extra tough in the early game this can really start to snowball the board position you have uh, the L640 is the premier card of the deck, uh, mostly meant to be the primary buff target due to its low operation cost and the fact that it can instantly grab the front line. That is a very effective way to very quickly start overwhelming the enemy and putting the pressure on. Uh, they have to answer quickly or it can absolutely get out of control. The M8 Greyhound acts as essentially a second card copy of the L6. It's less effective than the L6 due to it having an operation cost, but it still does a good job at that. Yeah, the 17th, which is another card that buffs, again, really good with the zero operation cost. You can go turn one the L6, turn two 17th Rifle Infantry, and you just get a very effective combination going. Mare Nostrum is your healing of the deck. Uh, this is still a highly effective card that gives you a lot of healing, especially as you buff up uh, an L640. However, uh, you don't. This deck does not last extremely long into the late game. Uh, it definitely has some late game threats, but I would definitely say, like that German deck we talked about previously, has a better late game as you ha as it has overall more impactful cards and is better built for that style for a slower game. Uh, but Mir Nostrum gives you not only healing alongside a small buff, but also sets up uh, a card we'll talk about in a minute. Then we have Patrol. Uh, this is mainly to get rid of guards. Uh, occasionally you can also just use it to kill stuff, but really uh, you are going to be wanting to play Patrol in order to get rid of a guard so your L6 can keep going towards the enemy HQ. Supply Shipment, this is the premier card that pairs up with an L640. Uh, you make it a 3-6 on turn 2, and that is extremely hard to deal with, uh, and the enemy pretty much needs hard removal, and if they don't, then they're probably going to die, or they're going to have to spend so long working against it. 5th Infantry is here. Uh, although not particularly the strongest option, uh, the fact that you get a 3-4 when it goes into the front line is quite powerful. Definitely a very well statted 3 drop. And because this deck is so focused around building the front line, it's often easy to get this in the front line and get the small buff on it, which just helps beefen up your threats. 
Uh, you also have gunship mission, which is essentially just more removal in order to help punch through guards. It also serves as a bit of finishing damage because it can hit the enemy HQ. Don't forget about that. Uh, I have won a game with this deck uh, solely based on the fact that I've used two, my two gunship missions to deal that last four damage, even though it looks like they've absolutely won that game. Uh, the M16 half track is very similar to something like patrol, mainly there to bounce guards uh, because it hits infantry units. Also very good at hitting a lot of the big air units that are running around. Being able to throw back like a BF-109 trop or something like a Fiat G55 is a big investment for the enemy and costs them quite a lot of tempo. Uh, you have first marines, which is just essentially a effective three drop with blitz. Uh, so you're able to help continue holding the front line. That's probably the main reason for it. The smokescreen can occasionally be useful, but I find that usually by the time that, that an enemy is attacking your HQ with a lot big air units and the, the smokescreen would be useful, you probably have already lost. Uh, then you have the M4 Sherman. This is one of the main card draw engines of the deck, which is very easy to accomplish as we have a lot of units to snatch the front line and control it. Uh, and this gives the Sherman almost guaranteed ability to draw two cards. And the final card in the deck is the Fiat G55. Uh, combined with Mare Nostrum and our big early game units, it's not unreasonable for this to come down on turn four as a 6-6, which is the exact same as the BF-109 trope trop sorry man i cannot say that uh but the trop is able to really put the pressure on and that's what the G fiat does although it is also backing up a very aggressive start with the l640 so that's the deck in terms of mulligan you pretty much always want to find an l640 that is almost like the one thing you should really be looking for uh because it's just the it's the core to the entire deck pretty much you just want a hard mulligan for one L640. If you have a 40, then you want to start looking for buffs. The USAC, the 17th Infantry, and oops, Supply Shipment are the best options. Uh, beyond that, I would probably start looking at some additional units. Uh, stuff like Half Tracks or the 5th Infantry uh, and whatnot. And essentially the game plan is you're going to play an L640 on turn 1. And then you're going to keep buffing it, and then hopefully that kills the enemy. Or, if that isn't working out, you can also use, start using stuff like the 5th Infantry, and 1st Marines, and the Sherman, and the Fiat, in order to drag the game out a little bit more and keep the pressure up, drawing cards, putting stuff in the front line with Blitz, and then kill them, and then finish them off with that. But, with that said, those are the three decks... Uh, that I have for today. Uh, again, I have I've done the most work with the Mobilize and the Popper Pizza deck. Uh, the German Control deck was something that really caught my eye on the Popper Discord, which again link is in the description. I highly recommend you join it. Uh, but it was definitely an interesting deck, and I did win a couple games. Namely, it is very tuned against the Pizza decks and the Mobilize decks. Uh, so it could be a good counterpick if you're seeing a lot of those. Regardless, I want to uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments how these decks have done for you. Which one was your favorite? Uh, and hopefully you're able to get those quests done in just a couple tournaments and be done with it. Uh, I personally have been really happy that we were seeing more and more popper tournaments. Uh, as it is just a really fun experience and a nice breath of fresh air compared to standard ladder and draft, you know. Just having deck construction rules, you know, and being able to brew up new lists and see cards that we don't otherwise see is really fun and interesting. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you. Have a good day.